This video is going to show you some of my Snipefall getting platinum rank and also showing you how to farm this particular Nightfall. Uh, Wendigo is the Nightfall weapon, which um, I have a suspicion in the future they'll buff heavy grenade launchers, referring to legendaries. I think it's worth your time to farm Wendigo out, especially when GMs come up, because you can get an adept version of it. But uh, this is going to be a solo with the new exotic bow, Hierarchy of Needs, from the uh, Spider Watcher dungeon. This is without Catalyst. I didn't realize you just need to do a, a quick master run and then you'll get the catalyst. So I'll go ahead and do that. But for now, I'll just do a run without the catalyst and show you what it is base, how it you know performs and stuff. Obviously, it's barrier bow. This bow does not have intrinsic champion mods. It's just a barrier bow is up this season. So if bows aren't up next season, then this is out of the sandbox. You're not thinking about this weapon. So we've got Overload Scout, Barrier Bow, we're, we're not using Unstoppable because it's master content and we're on Fusion Grade Build, Warlock. It's Solar uh, Burn, so you're going to be Mountain Champs regardless of whether we've got Unstoppable, or, Unstoppable on or not. Um, as for the bow itself, so this bow uh, is basically very similar to Taiku's, right? Uh, where you hit fire, you ADS. You hit fire, you ADS. The thing is with Tiku's is it's a bit more responsive on the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay side of things. This bow is... The thing is I haven't got Catalyst, so that might change things. Uh, well, it will. The draw time changes and stuff like that, I believe. Um, so it'll change things a little bit, but I still think Tiku's is just going to be... A bit easier to use because it works the perk works on all targets all the time whereas this guidance ring thing um it, it's good for meaty targets like you can see i, I had back-to-back -back rings there yeah uh, and the, the idea is that you when you get the full charge you hit fire the bow then you shoot through the ring for the damage bonus it's doing good damage, and I believe it works with Warman Cells. I'm sure somebody said it does. And it would make sense because it's kind of doing Solar Splash damage. But again, it's like, it's too similar to Taiku's, this for me. And Taiku's is such a strong bow. It's not the good bow for barrier, but you can make it work. Um, bows in general aren't that good on barrier, apart from Wish Ender. Uh, in general, they're not, they're not that good unless they flat out one shot the shield, which generally. Higher end content stuff, it's a two shot. Sometimes even three shot three shot on GMs, de depending on whether your bow has matched the EQ pen. But you can see it's a fun it's a fun weapon. You you know that I'm a lover of bows uh in the game. They are, as I've hailed them, the best PvE Grandmaster primary weapons to use, hands down, because of the range that they, they bring to the table. They're better than a hand cannon. Oh, and that's a, that's another thing. Why is no one using hand cannons lately? I don't know what's going on. They fixed the mod, and sort of a hand cannon mod is fixed. They so they've said, but still, I see no one using hand cannons. Bit of a shame, really. Um, with this unstop, we're not going to use our super because I want to use it uh, in the next room. So I'll just use an empowerment rift on this railing. The champion, the unstoppable, isn't smart enough to come up onto this railing. I don't think it's even possible. So we'll use our height. Uh, gain to the advantage and just take the champion from above we can sit in that rift uh, keep farming up our great energy with either the bow or the scout the scout's going to be better i'm just using night watch the scout's going to be better when i want to farm grenade energy when i'm sitting in an empowering rift because it's obviously going to be a faster fire rate than what a bow would be so sometimes you, you're going to see me use a bit of the scout I could have used any scout, by the way. I just, I'm just, i in a night watch mood. I could have run Hung Jury. I could have run the season of the um, Haunted Scout. That's really good. It's a decent scout. There's tons there's tons of explosive payload scouts, which I highly, highly recommend for overload champs if you're going to be using overload scouts. Also, it's void overload grenades this season, so you know where that's going. Void Walker. Voidwalker's going to be insane, obviously. I didn't go with that because I um, I wanted to melt the boss at the end. Uh, and that's why I went with well, really. And it's good for melting um, unstop champs when I don't have unstop. And the nature of the video is to try and showcase a little bit of the a little bit of the bow. Whilst also showing you to do one and nothing relatively quick-ish. 
this is by no means a speed run. You could probably solo it, and if you really went ham and done everything, you could probably do it in like 12 minutes. Like solo speed run. And team wise, less than 10 minutes easy. So we're getting flinched here. This isn't a. Um, my idea was to have the well um, basically take out two barriers quickly, but that wasn't paying off because I kept getting flinched like crazy. So I wasn't able to get this barrier. So that was bad gameplay right there, if I'm being honest. I'm just trying to rush it a little bit. Generally, you would, you would wait for all goblins, all the Vex goblins to come to you, um, kill that enemy spawn, get rid of it, and then deal with the final barrier. On GM difficulty, you definitely wouldn't be playing like that, and you would you would definitely just... You could probably melt one barrier down and then sort of just um, clear out the goblins and then deal with whichever barrier uh, next. Uh, we'll try and use the Guidance Ring as much as possible. It's doing good on match game shields, I'll be honest. It's a little inconsistent, though. Uh, and as I said, the bow feels a little slow right now because I haven't got a catalyst. Um, which I'll go ahead and get catalyst and then test it, out, test it out on GMs when they come out. Right, to see what it's like then. But I'm not going to use this bow again. I, if I get the catalyst this week, I'm not going to come back here and redo the run just because i got the catalyst or whatever. Because it's only master content, so I'll just leave it for now. I'm trying to get my well. I'm pretty close to it. But I can't mind if I pop my well or not. I think I end up doing I'm just about there. I wouldn't say that you have to pop your well in here. The better play, actually, now I think of it, because there's two unstoppables in the next room that we need to take out. Probably a better play to, to do your well in the next room. So I really didn't have the well right here. So we'll deal with the major target. We don't need to kill all the adds. <clears throat> just the just the boss. There's no more champions. We've killed the two barriers. Um, and then we can just move on to the next section. We're using Corsair's Wrath as a change because I've spammed Cataclysmic for quite some time now with the fourth times the charm and the cat uh, the fourth times the charm and the bait and switch. Honestly, you don't need that weapon in Nightfalls. It is a fantastic weapon. It's going to do you massive damage. But it ain't going to be the difference between you solo win this and not, even on GM mode. Any any Grandmaster you can think of, it ain't required, the whole bait and switch thing. Even though I know it does massive damage. But I wanted to use a solo linear still, and Corsair's Wrath is one. Other than that, there's not many solo linears. I don't know why is there not many solo linears. Like, legendary. We should be, we should be really... There should be tons of, like different elements of guns i don't know why or let us change elements on guns like we used to i love that changing elements on guns that was one thing i, I was hoping they were going to do that with crafting where they would let you change the element i know that would lead to people to a specific burn and all this stuff but so what it's fun fun mechanic so we're going to use our empowering rift and we're going to manipulate these champs so you can see the if you have a little bit of cover, uh, these unstoppables, you can sort of strafe in and out behind a wall. Because that boop, when they do boop you, they sort of do a stance, then boop. But you've got that, like, a second and a half to sort of strafe in and out to avoid the boop. Some walls, they can penetrate these champs. Some, some they can't. So, you can manipulate them. I haven't got a rift to manipulate, so I'm going to use a bit of heavy. I've got loose and finisher on. Because I'm not using weak and clear because I have no um, grenade launcher on. So I have more energy on my class piece to put some other mods on for once. So I'm using loose and finisher really good. Fanta very powerful mod because you can commit to any heavy that you want. And you can play with it. Hell, you could even do colony. Which I used to do those runs back in the day. GM colony runs. But yeah, you, don't, you can just commit to any heavy you want. As long as you get the finisher kill, keep finishing those champs you've got unlimited heavy essentially so with the mine section just a little tips uh, on that just to refresh your mind because we haven't we haven't had warden up for a bit i can't remember when we last had it what season but just to refresh people's minds on this section on round one there's three rounds on round one disable all the mines where capture point c and b are run past them yeah Set them all off because they'll be a problem to you later if you don't. 
This is especially true on a higher difficulty than this, where you really do need to know what you're doing. You can't just step in like on Master, like I am right now, and just casually play. Well, you can, because GMs aren't as hard as they are, but you still need to know a little bit of, of, of what you're doing and the strategies. So I like to come to this location because it's a good angle for both the overload and the barrier. Now, I, 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 I'm, depends on what, how I feel, but sometimes I'll deal with the unstoppable while the overload's up to get damage because the unstoppable won't chase you if the overload is still alive. But this time I decided just to melt because, again, I'm using that strafe tactic behind a wall where they try and boop you, but the boop ain't happening because that wall's... Whatever, for whatever reason, it's coded solid enough for the unstoppable not to boop through you the, through that wall. But some walls aren't coded like that in the game. The, the double barriers can be annoying. Um, this bores well. It's really bad. Like, bear in mind, I've got solo operative on. I've got font of might at times. It, it ain't always one shot in these shields. It should be. I'm at power. I'm, well, I'm above power. I'm 1611. This, this night falls uh, 1610. And it's not one shot and shield. Look at that. Whether I'm maybe sometimes slightly too soon because I'm a little impatient with this bow that I'm not. It's not a fully drawn shot. I don't know. But sometimes it ain't one shot and shields, and that's a bad sign for me right now because this is this is solar acute burn. So this exotic is actually doing more damage than it normally would do. So I would expect it to be one shot and shield all the time, and it's not. So I worry for this weapon. It needs a buff, potentially. That's why I make these types of videos. Some people, as I say, they'll sort of complain. Oh, I would never use this weapon. I would never do this. Yeah, I know. But look at Arbalest. Look at when that came out. Who used Arbalest? Look at it now. It's like the king of weapons. Yeah? So you, you've got to sort of think of the long game. So the Bungie can sort of see the sandbox of weapons and be like, all oh, right. People are engaging with this weapon, but it's not strong enough. Let's give it a buff. And that might be the case with this bow. I haven't used it enough to sort of... I'm not convinced to say, you know, it's... It's definitely not better than La Monarch. However, La Monarch is not as good as it was either. Because we're back to... You can only precision hit to stun. The poison isn't stunning. So that's got a little hit, but La Monarch's still crazy good. Um, Tiku's... Tiku's, this bow is very similar to that, and I think Tiku's is a bit more responsive of a bow. It's got more explosions. It's it's good on everything. Whereas this bow is really good on champs, but it's not good on ads. It ain't that good on ads. It ain't that good on ad clear, whereas Tiku's is good on both. It's just not that good on, on um, barrier shields, but that's a bow problem. That's not a Tiku's problem, so to speak. And it's really good on overloads. They buffed it. Tiku's was wasn't working on overloads and then one of the seasons in the last two seasons they 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 fixed it so it does work but it's not overload bow so it's barrier bow so notice how i've killed the barrier and the unstoppable but i haven't killed the overload so this is still the same thing so i'm going to repeat this twice for platinum rank you were allowed to skip one of the champions of your choice you could skip the barrier if you wanted and then kill the unstoppable or the overload or you could skip the overload and keep the barrier kill the barrier and unstoppable that's what i done because the overload's too much of a nuisance to go and chase down because that's what the overload does so i would just recommend leave the overload save a well of radiance for the unstop because you're gonna need that cause you've got, i've got no one stop on if your loadout's got one stop in then it ain't much of a problem to you. you wouldn't you wouldn't even need to use well but you you will get platinum you can skip a champ this is true for a lot of uh, GMs, where you can skip skip at least one champ and you would still get uh, platinum rank. You will definitely get platinum rank if you skip if you skip one. If you skip two champs, you won't. You'll get gold. And another thing I've found out is that if you kill the Overlord too quickly, the one that's just spawned on uh, here, when you capture A, that Overlord spawns on the bridge. If you if you spawn kill that Overlord, another Overlord spawns in its place. Which, if you don't kill that additional Overlord that spawned, you you get gold. So don't don't even mess around with the Overlord because you've got to actually kill the Overlord late for it to even work properly, and then you would skip the Unstoppable. So, in my mind, skip that. Forget about all that stuff. Just do Unstoppable Barrier. What we're doing here is we're avoiding the bug. This is another thing. 
what or nothing is still bugged and you if you if you go too quickly to the chest you will um, bug out the nightfall champions won't spawn uh, and you won't be able to get plant rank you better kill the boss no loot spawns and stuff like this and you've got to wipe wouldn't be a problem to me right now to wipe i'm on master i ain't getting sent back to orbit but on grandmasters it's a problem so you need to realize let the audio fully play out let the warden ai dialogue play out let all that stuff happen then pick the chest up that's all you need to do with it just remember that that is the absolute fix people say oh that doesn't fix it it does it's just it's just seen it then i've just fixed it it's 100 percent works if it'll only not work if you go too quick so now we're at the final boss with the champs four champions it seems daunting but it isn't because you can isolate so what you need to realize is the Overlord and Stockwell are going to come together in the middle. They're going to try and kill each other. I'm, I was wanting to deal with the Unstoppable first to show the bow off as much as possible. Because the Unstoppable is more aggroed when the Overlord is alive. When the Overlord is dead, the Unstoppable gets wise to you and starts to hide. You'll see that in a minute. Whereas if I left the Overlord up, the I would have been able to have a bit more fun with the bow. As in, let's see what damage it does to an unstunned, an unstunned champion. Because you'll see, the, the the champ will fight the barrier uh, on the left, the Vex, but eventually he stops. So his AI level has decreased because there's no Overlord. So look, that's what I was wanting to do. I was wanting to just bow him from here, which he can do. But again, I should have I should have kept the Overlord up. That's fine. It doesn't matter too much. But it is good. It is good on on targets chunky targets where you can keep procking back-to-back -back guidance rings it's good for that where it's a little slow is the bow feels a little the draw time that's linked to the cart list and it doesn't feel very good on ads it hasn't got that ad clear potential that the monarch has got and takers has got i was want to, well I, I didn't need to get a finish kill but i could see if i was short and heavy right here and i'm at the boss fight because it's essential you have some heavy because i'm double primary you don't need 20 shots uh depending on your power level you might though if you're 15 90s you're gonna need all the ammo you can get 1600 plus you're gonna be able to one cycle this boss in a well no problem without having to engage with this fight as you job as you would have to generally so you take it out in that order you would take out well, you would, in an ideal world, I would have liked to take out Unstoppable Overlord, then this uh, Barrier Cabal, which is the most threatening champ in, in, in this one. So you've got to be really careful when confronting them. And then the Vex Barrier at the end. I've got a font of my build on. I, I, I left it on from when I was messing around with the dungeon. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep this font of my on and, and make use of it in the Nightfall, which I did. Because font of my will stack with your well, and I'm using a Solar Heavy. I'm not using Cataclysmic, uh, and as I said, you don't need Cataclysmic to one cycle this boss. You definitely don't. It'll do massive damage, Cataclysmic will, but so will Corsair's Wrath. It's got high impact reserves. It's a decent weapon, this. It's a very decent weapon. I'll proc a Elemental Well via my nade. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pop my well, and then I'm just going to literally use my a couple of nades, a couple of linear shots, and that will kill the boss. If you're slightly lower power level than me, like 1600 plus, you're going to be able to do this, no problem. 1590s, you might struggle. That was a solo for this. I uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you.